Hello, everyone. Today I have with me Dr. Mead. Um, Dr. Mead is a family physician. So, um, hi, Dr. Mead. Hey, good evening. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good. Awesome. So I have a couple of questions for you. Um, my first question is, how did you choose family medicine? Uh, well, I, uh, when I first went to medical, or I first went to uh, undergrad, I didn't really want to go into medicine. I like science. But I didn't feel like I was uh, wanted to go into medicine. I didn't have any good role models, actually, at that time. And so I went um, and did a, got a degree in zoology. I was studying for my degree, and I did some research. Uh, one su one summer, I spent in a biochemistry lab, and and uh, I, you know, I, I thought that well, I just it wasn't really registering with me, and I wanted more contact with people. And so I um, said, well, you know what? I think maybe I should go to medical school, but I'll do a better job than the uh, uh, role models that I have in medicine th at the time. So I uh, decided, yeah, I'm going to go and do better than, than what I, my impression was. And, and uh, so it was a, a good decision. I'm, I'm glad I did that. That's really nice to know. Thank you. And what do you think is your most favorite part of your job right now? Uh, well, I think the main thing is with family medicine, we uh, see a large variety of people and we see people um, year, you know, kind of year in and year out over the years. So we get to know them and uh, just seeing them grow over time, seeing them, um, you know, flourish, see, see them through their good times and bad times. Uh, and, you know, have them develop a trust in me and, and um, confidence in my advice. So I think that's, that's really the best part. Of, uh, it's really the people. Absolutely. And I think going along the same lines, how does your typical day look like? Like your typical work day, what are the different kinds of cases that you see? Yeah, so that uh, uh, varies, uh, you know, from when I first started uh till now where i don't do any hospital rounds or or deliveries like i did before but uh i'll typically go in and and um uh look at my schedule for the day and take care of messages that may have occurred throughout the night uh in my in basket and then i'll see patients uh from eight to noon and then <clears throat> at noon i'll um uh, grab a quick bite to eat take take care of some messages call some patients and then uh, see patients from one to five. And then at the end of the day, uh, between five and six is when I like to call patients uh, with results and, and follow up and, and see how they're doing. So that's actually one of the best parts of the day is, is connecting patients with patients and, and telling them about their test results. Uh, but as far as the patients during the day, it's a, a variety of things. So in family medicine, you see a large um, variety of of issues and you know it's the the toughest thing is to be able to um, you know look at that and see if it's something that you can handle or not and and to have a basic knowledge of all the different uh, disciplines within medicine um, so that's one of the difficult parts but it's also one of the more rewarding parts because you can look at the whole picture you have uh, you know a, a knowledge of all the different aspects of medicine. So you can kind of look at the whole picture and patient, a patient may come in with one thing uh, and it turns out to be something totally different in a different organ system. And, and specialists don't really pick up on that as well as you know family physicians. Absolutely. And you kind of actually just answered my next question, which was, what do you think is the hardest part about your job? <laughs> Well, that's a part. Of, that's one of the hardest parts is, is staying up to date. But I think um, it's it's um, somewhat of a challenge. But I think you know, if you're going to medicine, like a lot of things, you want to be a lifelong learner. And and if you have an interest in always wanting to learn and and get better, then uh, that's not as as difficult. I think the other part, the other part is you know, you in medicine, just like a lot of things, you have to take the good and the bad. So you know, I, I since I see a lot of different variety of patients and not everybody's going to come in and be totally healthy. And some people are going to be quite sick. Uh, some people may have severe mental uh, health issues um, that the psychiatrist can't take care of, or they may have drug addiction or uh, things like that. And that's really, you know, that's challenging. And um, 
and they may not be very nice patients. And, you, you know, that's part of the, you know, part of the challenge there is in medicine, you can't just assume every patient is going to be perfectly compliant with whatever you say and, and do all the right things. There's people that do a lot of self-destructive things out there and you can't take it personally, but um, you still have to take care of them with uh, the same amount of compassion uh, that you would uh, somebody else that's maybe not as, um, you know, irritating. Absolutely. And that's a really good advice. What other advice do you think you'd ha give to high school students who are looking into a career in healthcare? Well, you know, I think um, uh, my advice always is to, um, you know, kind of start at the beginning and, and start the basics. And I think if somebody wants to uh, go into medicine, I would, um, um, you know, encourage them to do uh, things in healthcare that are, you know, the kind of the, the lower tier part of healthcare, which is real important. Like, you know, I, I encourage people to get a CNA degree, which is very easy. It's a six week, six weeks course, and you can then work in a nursing home or uh, do other things in healthcare settings. Uh, they may not be the most glamorous things, but those, uh, that's really, if you really want to take care of people, then, um, you know, that's, that's really the, the part that you can make a difference. And, uh, you know, I always give an example of the nursing homes and I do nursing home rounds and, uh, you know, the, the, Folks that work in nursing homes, I just feel sorry for them because they, um, you know, they're understaffed, they're underpaid, and they're underappreciated. Uh, and so every time I go there, I, I try to be as nice and, and do as best I can to help them. But uh, on the other hand, you know, the patients that are in nursing homes, that's their lifeline. You know, those people that are CNAs, uh, that's really maybe their only connection to the outside world. Or, um, and you can really have an impact on how your attitude is and at that level. Uh, and I think that uh, helps you uh, stay grounded uh, as um, you go on. And if you pursue a career in medicine, uh, as you go on and move up sort of the ladder or the tiers, you have that, uh, that grounding from when you, your experience was as a working in a nursing home as a CNA or, or something like that. Absolutely. That's such a helpful advice. I'm sure a lot of us appreciate that a lot. Um, so thank you for that. And thank you for spending our time, your time with us today. Um, we really appreciate that as well. Thank you, Dr. Mead. You're welcome. Yeah, and if anybody has any other questions, I'm happy to sit and talk with them about um, family medicine in particular, as I have a, just a big passion for it. And it's a very important part of uh, the healthcare system uh, for uh, keeping costs down and keeping people healthy because uh, family medicine does a lot of uh, preventive care. And, um, you know, that's really their bread and butter. They're experts in screening and prevention. And uh, so I'm, I have a good passion for that. Yeah. Absolutely. And your team as well, like from when I shadowed it as well, I saw that how teamwork was so essential to how healthcare functions. So thank you so much for all the effort from you and your team. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for Thanks. having me.